All right, the recording has started. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, RST Best Practice Tuesday Trainings here, our weekly training. Good to see you guys. Hopefully, you guys are having a great week. Um, Stocks Only and I are excited to have you guys on and to learn. Well, Go ahead. No, I said as, as always. Yes. So let's get started. Go ahead and do the disclaimer. Hmm. Oh, I have to do it. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I have people talking <laughs> behind me. Um, this is all. This is only her. entertainment. Yeah. This is not educational. Don't don't buy the stocks we mentioned. Don't sell them. Don't even look at the charts. It's not worth it. We don't know what we're talking about. It's all just for fun. All right, yep. reserved. Do your own deal. All right to reserve. Do your own diligence. Do your own research. And let's make money. How are you? I'm good. I had a good call yesterday. I didn't play it because I'm not confident enough to play my shit for some reason. Oh, God. What was your call? Uh, YVR. Oh, the, oh, my God. Did I tell you my story about YVR in 2020? No. That's the um that's like the um the gamer the gaming the game thing, right? The gamer console. Oh, I'm not sure. I I oh. called it cuz it was the it was the top loser on Friday and I was okay. like, "Hey, this is a huge gap down like I you know, I think it stands to take a, make a little bit of a move up." I drew the trend line and then that morning I was like, "You know, I could buy this." And it didn't. And it went up all day. <laughs> it's like, a gaming oh, stock. Great. When it was like there was a, it went from seventy to a dollar twenty five. Like, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't it had usually a... run of like TCAT. Huh? I think YVR yeah, runs when TCAT runs a lot. Oh, does it? Yeah, I'll have to keep. That oh, in mind. okay. Keep that in mind because TCAT ran today too. It ran to four dollars if you bought the dip at like th the low threes. Um. Okay. Well, cool. So you guys know I like to do uh, videos, motivational videos on things that are trending. And right now, what's trending? Take a wild guess. Someone. Elon Musk, Twitter. Yeah. So we're going to continue to learn more about Mr. Elon Musk and where he came from, how he started, all the obstacles and things that he went through. So let's roll the first video. <laughs> Let me know if you can't hear it. Okay. The first device for hacking your metabolism. With just one breath. SpaceX's lack of experience, one point six billion dollars, could compromise Elon safety. Armstrong testified against commercial space flight. No, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here, and, and I think that would change their mind. You know, th those guys are heroes of mine. There are many more ways to fail than to succeed. For a rocket, there's like a thousand ways a thing can fail and like one way it can work. You could have a lot of rocket failures. The first stage. Lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket. What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in spaceflight and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. There need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's gotta be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living. If somebody is doing something that is useful to the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, that's, I mean, I think that's, that's fine. Like, stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. Depending upon how well you want to do, and particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. And I mean, if you do the simple math, say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, you'll get twice as much done in the course of a year as the, as, uh, the other company. I am somewhat impulsive, and uh, I don't really want to try to adhere to some CEO template. A natural human tendency is wishful thinking. A challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? I think certainly uh, being focused on something 
that you're confident will have high value to someone else um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment. I think certainly extremely tenacious and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. I mean, it, I think it's, it's like quite, quite painful and difficult. So all those things improve the odds of success. I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened, and, and that's really the only way forward. That's unreal! Space is hard, and rockets tend to fail, unfortunately. Um, and uh, even when you've got like, a lot of really smart people working super hard to minimize the probability of failure, it's still, it's still there, and it's... Um, and it's you know it's it's quite significant. You know, people have asked me like, well, why why are rockets you know especially hard? Um, and and the, the, you know part of it is like everything has to work the, the first time. Like there's there's no you can't do a recall, you can't patch it. It's got it's like nine minutes to orbit or it's over. You can never test the rocket completely in the environment that it's actually going to experience. Mm -hmm. so you you can't fully recreate something that's moving super fast in a vacuum on the surface of Earth. Like you can only really rec recreate that on, in space. I mean, it's, I think it's it's like quite quite painful and difficult, honestly, <laughs> um, and it's, it feels terrible. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, the the, the company is sort of looking to you know me to you know rally them, and uh, I do. Um, but I honestly feel super bad. So what what does super hard mean? Um, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. And we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we're, we're so hot up we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. If other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that you, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. I am a small business owner trying to find other small business owners to tell them about Next Insurance. I'm April Wilkerson and I run a YouTube channel with over... When I was young, I, I, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, when, I, when I got older. Um, people kept asking me and... and um, but, but then eventually I thought that the idea of inventing things would be, would be really cool. And the reason I thought that was because um, I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke which said that sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And, and that's really true. Um, if, you if you go back, say, 300 years, the things that we take for granted today uh, would be, you'd, you'd be burned at the stake for, um, you know, being able to fly. Um, that's crazy. Uh, being able to see over long distances, being able to communicate, having um, effectively with the internet uh, a, a, a group mind of sorts, um, and having access to all the world's information uh, instantly from almost anywhere on the earth. Um, this, is, this is stuff that, that really would be magic, it would be considered magic um, in, in times past. In fact, I think it actually goes beyond that because there are many things that we take for granted today that weren't even imagined in, in times past. They weren't even in the realm of magic. So it actually goes, goes beyond that. So I thought, well, you know, if, if, if I can do some of those things, basically if, if, if I can advance technology, then that, that's like magic and that would be really cool. Um, and the, the, I always had sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out what, what does it all mean? Like what's the purpose of things? And um, I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the, 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 the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened, and, and that's really the only way forward. For, for any given company, just can, can keep thinking about, are these efforts that people are, are expending, are they resulting in a better product or service? And if they're not, stop those efforts. Um, and then the, the, the final thing is, is, is don't, don't just follow the trend. You may have heard me say it to, to, that it's good to think in terms of the, the physics approach of first principles, uh, which is rather than reasoning by analogy, you boil things down to 
the most fundamental truths you can imagine and you reason up from there. And this is a good way to figure out if, if, if something really makes sense or if it's just what everybody else is doing. It, it's, it's hard to think that way. You can't think, think that way about everything. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, but if you're trying to do something new, it's the best way to think. Um, and that framework was developed by, by physicists to figure out counterintuitive things um, like quantum mechanics. So it's really a powerful, powerful method. I think that the final thing I would encourage you to do is now is the time to take risk. Uh, you don't have, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't have, you don't have kids. Uh, your, your obligation to, well, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> probably don't have kids. Um, the, 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 uh, but, but as you, as you get older, your obligations increase. So you, the, and once you have a family, you start taking risk not just for yourself but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that uh, before you before you have those obligations. So I would I would encourage you to take risks now. Do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. Thank you. That was a good one. Yep. And it all just boils down to, guys, how hard are you willing to work? You know, uh, whether it's stock trading or, or you know, uh, one of your passions, you know, like you got to find something that you really love. And if it's something that you really love, it won't even feel like work. I think Oprah is the one who said that quote. And um, it's the truth. You know, I can tell you. Um, when I was working for Apollo Group, and we would get we would get um, leads, right? So our manager would get leads of all these kids that wanted to enroll into school, and I was an enrollment counselor, and so my job was to basically convert these leads into um, people signing up for classes, and you know, the uh, my manager um, will would give out these would give out the list at seven o'clock in the morning, but our shift, our, I mean, our, my job didn't start till nine o'clock, but he would be like, if you guys want to come in and do some overtime and come in early, I'll give you the hottest list and you'll get it first. So what did I do every day, Monday through Friday, I would be in the office, in my office at seven o'clock to get the hottest list because I knew those were the hottest people that wanted to enroll in school. I didn't want a list from like two weeks ago. So I would literally be in the office at seven o'clock to get the hottest list and I would have the highest enrollment numbers every single month to, to where I became a top agent with Apollo Group and I was traveling all around the country. You know, their um, headquarters is in Phoenix and I would just, you know, I would go to all these top up trainings and all this stuff, but that took me three years of getting up early every morning to show up to work at seven o'clock when I didn't have to be there till nine. So, you know, it's just how bad do you want it? You know, um, the starting salary at that job, I believe was like $40,000, but I didn't want to be a $40,000 agent. I wanted to make a lot more money than that. And I wanted to make six figures. You know, I think I was like 26 or 27 at the time. And that's basically what I had to do. I had to get up every morning, get to work by seven o'clock at my desk so I could get this list so I can call all the latest people that wanted to enroll in classes. And I would call them and they would set an appointment with me. They would come in. They would talk to me for 45 minutes. And the next thing you know, before they left the building, they were enrolled in a class, you know? And I did that for, what, five, six years in the um, school industry. So it's just, you know, it's all sales. It's how bad do you want it? And at the end of the day, same thing with stock trading and this Wall Street life. You know, are you willing to get up if your broker doesn't open till seven or eight or nine, whatever? But are you still going to wake up at four o'clock when the market opens, Eastern Standard Time, to see what's trending, what's hot? What's going on in the news? Are you turning on your television to see, you know, what they're talking about? What's the hottest stuff? You know, it's just how bad do you want it? You know, this is financial freedom. 
the stock market is a money making machine. You know, if you use it the right way, you get up, you study, you learn your charts, you can make it. Yeah. Just Elon Musk. He, you know, he looks like he never slept. He worked, you know, 100 hours a week. Um, and today he's what the richest guy in the world. Yeah. And he can buy, he could buy out t- Twitter. He could literally be. I mean, I've said this once about his 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 amount of money, uh, fucking, from, if you go back to, two thousand twenty or no eighty two thousand, two thousand eight. No, 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 eighty two thousand twenty two years. If 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 you were alive eighty two thousand twenty two years ago, exactly eighty thousand. You, you know, because this is two thousand twenty two, so. That's how long, that's how old you would have to be. And you have to save $10,000 a day. And by today, you would have as much money as Elon Musk. That's insane. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. His money is, is, his money is like, it's, it's infinity, right? $10,000 a day for 82,000 years. That's how much money he has. Let me tell you guys something. I know some royal families, right? I won't mention who they are because they're really high profile, but they're good friends of mine. And one day I was talking to uh, one of my friends, um, this Moroccan guy, and I was just like talking to him and we're all friends with these people. And I was like, how much money do you think the prince has? You know? And he goes, you see that tree over there? And I'm like, yeah. And it was like this big, huge tree with a bunch of leaves. He's like, imagine each leaf being like a billion dollars. So, you know, it it's like, wow, you know, people, people like it's, it's, a, it's amazing. It's it, like money's not everything, but let me tell you, it's a great tool to have, <laughs> you know, cause you could do a lot with it. And that's the point. Like it, we're not all money, mind, we're money minded in here, but we're also about helping others. And you could do a lot of things when you have money, just like Elon Musk, he's got tired of Twitter. He got tired of you know, what's that lady's name, the congresswoman that went off on him, um, Elizabeth Warren. You know, he got into a Twitter beef with her and a couple other people this year about his taxes and how much he was paying the IRS and all kinds of stuff. So he said, you know what, I'm just going to buy a bunch of shares and be a top shareholder in Twitter where I pretty much own 9% of the company. Now that's boss move. And now he gets to control whatever he wants. And then they put him on the board. And his first tweet is, do you want an edit button? Like, yeah. Give me a fucking edit <laughs> button, dude. Let's go. You know what happened? Twitter actually tweeted that out. So Twitter has their own account, right? Their own twi- Twitter account. And Twitter said, would you guys like an edit button? You know what people did? They started bashing it. They were like, is this an April Fool's joke? Like, they did it on April 1st. So Because Twitter would the- never do that. Right. And then so then Elon Musk tweeted it. And look what happened. Right. Everybody was like, hell yeah. Like, can you also take out the scammers and the bots? Can you get us verified? Can you? I mean, it was like he opened up literally a can of worms where everyone was under his tweets talking about all kinds of stuff that they hate with Twitter. They're like, can you free Trump? You know, you got you got one of the uh, countries with the biggest terrorists um, still ramping on Twitter, tweeting away. But you got our former president, you know, banned for freedom of speech because he had some mean tweets, you know? So like, so yeah, so hopefully Twitter, like I, I tweeted today too. I said, you know, Twitter, if you guys free Trump, which is free Trump is a hashtag that's going, that's trending right now on Twitter. <clears throat> and I'm like, free Trump and your stock will go to a hundred dollars. It'll do what the Trump stock did. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. If they, if they, if president Trump comes back on Twitter, that stock is going to go through the roof. Well, it'll be good so, anyway, to know if he's coming back. How, how is everybody doing today? <laughs> I had a red day. That's all right. Oh, it's okay. That's all right. I mean, everything was fucking red. And right now I have eight stocks, and that's not a problem because I'm, I, I know what I hold and I know why I hold them. And I was only down 50 bucks total, so my risk management is not bad on this terrible day that we had. So. Okay. I'm good. They're all swings. I'm holding them all. I didn't sell anything. It wasn't like, oh fuck, this chart's broken. Sell, sell. It was just a you know down day for everything. Big shout out to JC who called out ATER at the bottom today. Oh yeah, I, and I just was- got my computer too. 
Yeah, I got a thousand shares at like three forty, and it went up to like um three sixty. Yep, when I sold yeah. it, so much. Yep. that was my one trade for the day, and then my swings were down just like everyone else's. So <laughs> right. I didn't make any day trades. I just had had my swings, and I'm like, yep, today I'm just holding these today. Barely went yeah, down. I thought I was gonna reverse, and then it went down a little bit more, and then volume finally came in. Yep, you called it. Yep. Good job. Thanks. Um, yeah, yesterday I, I on my list I had YVR SLS was another one I was looking at uh, on Friday for that was the top gainer for last week or top loser for last week last Friday. Yeah, those uh, those losers become great uh, dead cap bounces. Right, anything that has that is a top loser on Friday, and you look at the chart, and the very end of the day was the lowest point of the day. Buy that shit on Monday. Yeah, I think the top loser, I don't know, but uh, Alpha and Inbar called uh, T-A-N-H, and um, Alpha gave it to me at 55 cents, and I was like, okay, I'll add it. I added that, and it went up to 70 cents today. I sold it at 69. Oh. Haha, 69. And then oh, it went back... <laughs> And then it went back down to like 60 and so I reloaded it and it went back up to like 68. So like, you know, you could just find those plays where it's just silent and it's just doing its thing, you know, and you can redo it over and over again. Right. Yeah. My, but uh, a lot of the just started trading. He happened to buy TANH just on a fucking way. He's like, I don't know why I bought it, but I'm so happy. <laughs> Who said this? My cousin. He oh, okay. just started trading. He's like, "Look at my portfolio." I'm like, "Bro, oh, well, how, where'd you get awesome. your call?" Oh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just buying whatever. <laughs> got lucky. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, and then um, a lot of the SPAC plays were up today. Um, you know, B E E M. I spoke about it last week, I think, and that went through the roof again. Um, you know, I like finding plays with four or five dollar spreads, guys. <laughs> Low floats, give me four yeah. or five dollars. I'm done for the day, you know. I'm, I'm into that. Let's do it. Yeah. That so, too. Dollar spread. I sit here in front of the computer all day. It's not like I'm preoccupied. Like, let's go. I can handle a volatile spread. Mm-hmm. Now that one spread, uh uh, I had people like, Oh my god, I lost so much money. And I'm like, How did you lose money? And they were like, because they were chasing it today. What is that stock that went through the roof? It was this morning. It's like S S B F M F. I don't know. I didn't see. I don't know. Some bio stock, and Inbar called it at four dollars. I missed it. I was making coffee this morning, and that thing went to six dollars in pre market. And then when the market opened, it dipped back down to like five something, and then it went back up to like six eighty. And then there was a huge knife at like six fifty or something. There was a huge knife. And it dropped to like it went all the way down to like four eighty five, yeah. And then they try to pump it back up in pre market. So, I mean, not pre market and um in power. power. No, that was mine and Ryan's day trade today. Did you guys we lose? Got no, we got in at like between nine and nine thirty. We rode okay. the, the wave up, sold I think seventy cents up, and then we just. And then I saw the knife after. I was like, thank God. Oh. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are <laughs> pissed off about that. And yeah, that was my only day trade today. I just wasn't feeling the market. I had a few things to do. So, yeah. But one trade today is fine. <laughs> That's good, though. That's yeah, good. but I've got in those two that I told you about after hours. So, hopefully, I'm hoping they give a night. Yeah. So that's what you got to do, guys. Don't chase stocks. Find things that are red and bloody and then write it up. So let's talk charts. Go ahead. Um, Let me pull them up. up. You want to pull up some charts? Do you guys have a chart? Do you guys have any charts that you want us to look at? And maybe some of the wins that you want to talk about? We want to hear about your wins. Yeah, let me know. I want to hear about your losses. Uh, Chart at DFAI. It looks beautiful in my opinion. DFAI or DFAI? No, GFAI. Like the daily chart looks amazing. Okay. That had news this morning. Yes. And I got in at like um what did I get in at? I sold it at a dollar eighty nine in pre market. I think I wrote it up from like a dollar fifty ish to dollar eighty nine. What's your no, prediction for it tomorrow? What do you think it's gonna do I, tomorrow? Before I, I totally switch brokers. 
So I could uh, I mean, is... trade pre market now. <laughs> Wait, who'd you switch yeah, to? It's... I don't know what it's going to do, but it's one of the top, like, short squeeze candidates. It's at a dollar and I mean, no, Look, this is I mean, not no, a coincidence, no. y'all. There's there's a reason that, that this stock dropped all the way down to 159 but picked back up and stayed at 169 Not 170 not 168 It's always a level. <laughs> it's always a level. There you go. But this stock, we've been in the stock for right, Miss Um Jen. We've been we've been playing G A F I for a while. Like this was our play in um yes bar. Yep. early yes. March, February. Inbar gave it to us. Like it's I think he gave it to us at like actually like fifty some cents. He told us this morning, but I got in at sixty seventy cents. We wrote it all the way three dollars. Yep. This, that this, was the one we played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the stock is is old, like it's an old stock, but like it's back in the hype because of the news and whatever else. It's got that's going the thing. On. Like all these they, stocks are old stocks, you know. And they They're got a football acquisitions coming up. They got what? Your little uh, uh, money. I believe they have a couple of acquisitions coming up. Oh, oh okay. They sent a letter of intent to uh, gosh. I can't even think about it, but um, if I find the information, I'll, I'll share it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's got it had news today, and um, we saw it at the bottom, and we wrote it up, and I sold. I'm not holding this, but um, but then it dropped again in the morning. As soon as the bell rang, it went down to like a dollar fifty something. It didn't even run. Right. Yeah. Let's see. I, I believe it's it was because of the story. red day. Like it kind of just ruined the momentum. That was a, oh, that's a double top. I mean, it also really didn't move. Yeah, but I if mean, you're... it did, but not for the day today. Right, you can, you could have sold one one fifty nine to one eighty seven. That's a twenty. That's right, a, that's not a bad move. I don't know how many shares you got. You know, my I cousin know. puts things into perspective for me because he has a small account. And so when he gets shares, he gets like 25, you know, 50, and he'll send me his wins and he's super happy. And, I, and it's like, you know, 250. And I'm like, hell yeah, bro. But he, you know, he's just happy because he's winning. And that's how I try to stay. I don't care how, how much that's, I'm making. I just need to make and some. That's, and that's, that's just how it is. You know, that's how you practice and that's how you, you, you get in the mindset of trading. Right. <laughs> you're not investing in any of this crap, you know, right. you're trading it. So that's the mindset that you need to get in. Like, okay, I don't care what the news is. Like the stock can do whatever it wants to do, but I want to be collecting my coins. Okay. And so if you're a trader, you got to know the difference between being a trader being, and then swinging something where you are really confident in your DD and you're hoping for the best for the company uh, versus you're investing in something like Tesla or, you know, Apple or something like that. You know, so you got to know the difference. And in a market like the way that we're living right now with the inflation and everything going on, you might want to focus more on trading, you know, where you're building your account and you're cashing, you're cashing out. And that way you're confident and you can sleep at night. If you have a few million dollars, feel free to drop a bunch in whatever you want to invest in. But if you got a $4,000 account, you don't want to hold something for a year. You know, you want to trade. Mm-hmm. Oh, Compound. before we uh, before we go on, we have some new folks in our um Discord, and I want to say hi to them. Welcome to RST, our family. Um, oh, I see you. We have Ryan, and uh, welcome, new- welcome. Ryan is um Ryan's new- my son. <laughs> Hello, hi Ryan. Welcome to our family, welcome. and um. We heard that you've been trading, and we wanted you to be included in our family with your mom. Mm-hmm. Awesome. We have Come another. On. We have another two people that joined. One is going to stay anonymous, and the other one is my friend Chris. He's he couldn't make it tonight, but he uh he is uh part of our family now too. We actually became friends in 2020, but we became really good friends recently with CYRN. <laughs> <laughs> we both. We both are down on the stock. So we're like, okay. So we became friends through that. So, um, hey, me too. <laughs> yep. There hey, you go. All I want to talk together. about something. You guys want to, want to see something crazy in case you didn't see it. I'm sure you did. But can we talk about what happened with any fucking yesterday? 
Yeah, let's talk about any. What the hell was that about? Okay, so so look, check this out. I just want to explain it how I watched it because I was watching this stock when it happened just by chance. I just, yeah, like, I saw you clicked on the it chart. In- right. So okay. they first of all, we've been waiting on their merger with Griffin Mining for how long? A long fucking like, time. And that's that's why they're a Bitcoin play. Like they have some Bitcoin holdings, but they're mainly like they're they're trying to break into Bitcoin mining space. So the reason that any runs with Bitcoin is because of that. So the merger fell through and it was at two twenty something, two sixteen, two seventeen, and it drops immediately to a buck forty eight. And I see this, don't know what's going on, and I'm like, I know this stock, I should buy this stock right now. And I didn't, of course, I'm just watching it and then fucking I watched it start going up, which I, I didn't expect this move. I expected a move in the morning. And all of a sudden, it immediately gets to 324, and now it's trading. Never got it. When was the last time it was at 324? It was like it's last year. It's fucking crazy. Hold on. Yeah, look. <clears throat> Let's see. It, it's not even shown on the daily chart because it was in the after hours. So 324 right here. It was Feb- February 4th, just for a moment, and then again on January 5th, just for a moment. So it looks like on the 5th of the months, it decides to get to three something. But <laughs> fucking, so yeah, so now, all day today, the new floor becomes 223, and it's, and it's trading at this mid-level of 239. So now the merger is gone, and the reason to hold any is a lot less. But Bitcoin is bullish, so people are still buying any. It's being pumped on Twitter. This is an example of if there's bad news, you play it because it's great. If there's good news, it drops. That is insane. It's the reason any (laughs) is that I I was telling Alpha this. Any is a Wall Street darling. Let me tell you why it's a Wall Street darling. Last year, any was at $2. Was any an IPO or a SPAC or something? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, so anyway, it was two dollars stock, and it ran all the way up to like, what was it, eight dollars? Yeah, it ran. Hold on, it it, it ran hard. Eleven ninety eight is what it ran okay. to in twenty twenty one. So, and it did that for weeks. It did that for weeks and weeks. Everybody was in any 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 was the Wall Street darling last year. If you yep. got into any, regardless of when you got in, you could have got in at four dollars, five dollars, six dollars, seven. It didn't matter. You were making money. And that's and why- he ran. I'm sorry, real quick. And he ran what Riot and Ma- my Mara, is it? Mara. It ran. It yeah, also I ran with ran all three. Mm-hmm. I found any because of Steve Gomez trade ideas. Trade of the week was SPRT support dot com. And any was running alongside it. And I traded them both. And I made crazy money. I, the first time I bought any was like two nineteen, And I traded yep. it all the way up. That's why. And he's a Wall Street darling. So that's why people love the stock. So when you saw the knife yesterday, well, I was like, ha ha, you know, like, what the fuck, you know, but I said, I'm glad I'm not in this. And then I said, I should, I should probably be in it now. I I was like, oh my God. And it did this. It did a total reverse, like so fast ASAP. This is the five minute chart. So it from, from 530 PM, my time to 6.25, it ran $2 after hours. Yeah. Look at that. That is wild. That's a great, great, easy, fast money right there. Yeah, and if I'd have bought it, I'd have, I'd have bought, like, you know, probably a 1,000 shares. Like, yeah. I would, have, I would have jumped in, like, let's go, because I know any. I've been trading any for a long time. Right. I, but I, we none of us expected that. Even the furus didn't expect that. People who are right. on Twitter... I was watching like, a knife, though. I could have set it up and bought it. I was watching it. I happened to catch it. I feel so stupid. Okay, so let me ask that. you, what's the float on any? 53 million. Okay, so it it's not even this low float, and look what it did. It's crazy. That the, just shows you that people love the stock. The, the, the volume for the day was 54 million out of an average of seven. And that's after the merger fell through, and it's not a red day for it. So do they have any other catalysts? I don't now? think so. Let me see. Um. Mm, let's see. One day ago, this is when the merger was terminated, and then will expand its board of directors to five members. This was fourteen hours ago, and then it names the the CEOs, and then there's why is any stock up, and then Sheeb crypto fans bark for Bitcoin of America. They're still putting all this like it's you know it's a it's a Bitcoin play, even though the merger with Griffin fell through. Still, okay. still a Bitcoin play. 
And, okay. you know, they've, I don't know if people care that they've announced the new board of direct. we'll expand the board of directors, but that's, I guess, positive news. Mm-hmm. Which means it should be down because everything's backwards all and the time. I'll tell you how this, okay, let's compare this stock to CYRN. So CYRN, okay, had a PR today. <laughs> And because they did their filing from the from us, their shareholders, about how they're going to dilute six million shares or whatever the hell, um, and that's old news. It's not news that just came out, but for some reason on last Friday, every like they just, I guess they started diluting, and you didn't see it on the tape. So therefore, people got pissed off, and they brought up the news from like February, and next thing you know, the stock fell. Right, it fell all the way down to what three bucks. So now they put a PR two days later and no one gave a shit. So there's a difference, yeah. you know, and that's the sentiment. So you have any that's been, that's a wall street darling and CYRN was a wall street darling until they did some shady shit and no one cares. So got to know the sentiments of how these plays are playing out here. And, right. and back when CERN was, was, was the actual darling is when everybody was all over the place with, Hey, sir, it was all over Twitter. You could hear that it was the darling. If you pay attention, you know, mm-hmm. and once it fell off, you could hear all the, you could hear all the sentiment turn around. And here's the thing. You can have all the catalyst in the world and the fundamentals, but the charts have to confirm the story. Yep. Okay. Charts have to confirm the story or else you're just going to be in La La Land with your catalyst and <laughs> your money is going to be stuck at holding a bag. So, you know, just always remember that, you know, um, I learned that from Steve Gomez. He's always talks about your charts and they have to confirm the wonderful story that you're creating um, with the catalyst and the fundamentals and stuff like that. So, um that's very important to know. I'm mad at myself because I was going to buy uh, AEI on Monday, and I didn't. And they ran after hours today. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that uh, NBAR posted that the CEO bought shares of the company. Yeah, like $2.9 million or something, I think. And this is why I love – these are the types of penny stocks I love. So, like, TANH, look at the 52-week high on TANH. TANH. T A N H or whatever it is. I hate that ticker because there's an H at the end. <laughs> <laughs> the 52 week high on that is like um, 1630. Look- okay, now look at AEI 52 week high. 1240. Okay, those are the types of those are the types of penny stocks I love with the high. Yeah. I'm not touching anything that's like the 52 week high is like, I don't Four. know. <laughs> like AIKI, that one, <laughs> this was a funny one to watch today. So AIKI, right? All of a sudden, it's a low float. It's a low float. And it all of a sudden halted today, right? So I'm like watching this. I'm like, why the hell did it halt? It halted at 60. So it's, I think it opened at 44 and it, it got pumped. Yeah. It was getting pumped and then it gets halted. Uh. But then it gets halted on news that something like they're about to do like a research or something like a conference or something like that. So then everyone's getting all crazy and hyper and like, oh, my God, it's a 60 cent halt. The high of the day It's going to go through the roof. And guess what happened after the halt? Right down. There's the knife. What's the 50 week high? Dollar 20. Yeah. I actually really whole- like this company because I like what they do. They're a mushroom stock. I know all the mushroom stocks. They 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 use psychedelic mushrooms for medicine. They study them. They just, they just have bad PR. Right. They just don't have any marketing. The stock has always had problems. Even last year, it had problems. Yeah. Like T Cats, fifty two week highs, like forty bucks. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Fucking for forty five eighty five. What's it at right now? Three forty eight. Yeah, it's it had okay. lots of volume, lots of green volume. Not today, but no, yeah, it last... did have a lot of volume today. Ten ten million on an it. average two point eight. Right, but it had forty two million Monday and then thirty four yeah, last Friday. 
Still, what the daily chart looks the, nice. The, the volume for today is higher than the overall free float, and that's why yeah. it ran. What's color stocks at high fifty two week high? I think it's S C C S C W. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh, I should know this. Dollar seventy six. It's at twenty three cents. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching this one. Uh, I bought into this one like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, this is BS. This is play. He, this is his yeah. tick. Uh, oh, yeah. Speaking of BSS, um, I don't know if you guys re- recall, but last week I said Lori called um, OP for us when we were doing our watch list, and it, it, it ran for us a bit. And we're back in it. And yesterday, buy sell short called it for the same reason: fertilizer, oh, not- coal, coal shipper. Uh huh. So we still have it. It's cheap. Sixty-four what's cents the, or something right now. What's this? Ticker? What is it? OP. <clears throat> OP? Yeah, OP. It's 67 cents after hours right now. Okay. I'll put that on my watch list. She called it well, down I here. At, um, she called it down here in the 60 cents range, and it ran 87 cents for us. Great job, Lori. That's awesome. Thank you. Hi. So when hi. BSS called it, <laughs> hi, then I'm like, hey, BSS <laughs> just called your stock. Yeah. That's awesome. Which means, which means he already bought it. Yep. And we already had it. We're like, okay, fuck it, let's go. Right. There you go. Love it. What else what other tickers do you have you guys been playing? Um, I'm playing M- MTCR because that was a because Zach called it because Zach said I like this and that was a few days ago after buy sell short called that strictly a pump play. It's the only reason I'm playing it because I expect Zach to pump it. Um CLXT is food. I wanted to play this in AGRI. I bought CLXT because it's cheaper. And then Buy Sell Short called that too. Buy Sell Short because a lot of a lot of these plays I have right now. Um, Mind Medicine, I I have a. I believe in what they do, and B. That's a Steve Steve Gomez call, and I like the chart. SDPI oil cheap traded sideways at a dollar three for the last week. I have it. Read. I just held because my stock or because my risk is low. It's only two cents under where I bought it at this low ass level, so I'm waiting for it to bounce back up. If it if it breaks under tw- twenty, like if it has a real day where it's under twenty five, I'll like. Really Jeez, what happened to Excella? Sell it. What? Oh yeah, and what? then Excella. Um. Oh uh, God. I'm, I'm down Somebody in, in Excella, but Excella is that's an RST darling, all right? It's it a, is. That is it's a special RST stop. Darling. So I'm I'm down in it right now because I always buy. I've been up in it, down in it, up in it. I've made money, lost money on it. I just like to know it, right? But what happened was it um what was it a few days ago that this happened? They uh somebody dropped their price target to fifty cents from three dollars, and then it fucking just plummeted, and then. Someone at Gold Goldman Sachs brought it back to two bucks and it hasn't recovered yet. And they've had shitloads of good they're, news. They are messing with the stock like no other, and I don't even know why. This the you know like it's just it's crazy to me. They they're doing what they did to Milan and C E N N with the stock. Like, you know, that's what they're doing to it. They the the short sellers have literally. Trash the stock. I see. That's crazy. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. insane. But because otherwise, I would get back in at at these current prices. It's it's a steal. I mean, you can almost get. That's what I'm saying. This is why I don't like. I don't really give a shit. Look at the chart. Look at these levels. It has a 52 week low of 34 cents, and that was on January 24th which was a shit day for every single stock. If you go look, that day was trash for every stock. It was the worst day for every stock this this year. So now you guys, this thing you know, is bouncing off 40 cents consistently twice in a row, three times in a row. Isn't C E N N isn't that form of N A K Z? Yeah. Sen is, it is you right? used to be naked, yeah. 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 I yeah. played that. C E N N is now a EV stock, not a lingerie company. But yeah, it used to be the former naked. It's got the ape army on it. I'll always call it naked. Yeah, me too. So um, I have a question. So do you guys watch Charles Payne at three, uh, three eight, three p.m. Uh, two p.m. I do. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So if you watched him, I think like last week or whatever, he was talking about small caps and how they've been like so hurt with everything that's going on. There's like over, like 
I think he said like 3,000 small caps that are literally at their bottom. Yeah. Can you guys right. imagine like 52 week bottoms? Think about this. All of my stocks that I have right now, the reason I'm down, I was down in all of them except for the after hours. I, I've been down in all of them all day. Two, two percent, two percent, whatever. So that was only fifty dollars that I was down. I have eight stocks. I have hundreds of shares in all of them, and I'm only down fifty bucks when all of them are red <laughs> because they're all small caps at the fucking bottom. Exactly. So if you could find these bottom plays, like you should load up because they're there. There's nowhere else for them to go. Exactly. That's why I'm not. And the like, bears are I'm not like, going to okay. target. Them it's red. I'm not looking. <clears throat> the bears are going to target the ones that are running. So like, like they targeted SMF, whatever, whatever that stock was today that had cancer, that cancer news that ran to six dollars this morning in pre market. They're going to target those types of stocks. That's where you're going to see the knives. But you're not going to see knives. It's going to be a slow, steady climb on these because they're already at the bottom and there's nowhere else to go. They just need volume and some you know, investors and bulls to be like, hey, okay, I'll invest in this. You're a good company. You know, whatever. What do you guys think will happen to CENN? Just based on this this chart I have in, in front of me, what do you think will happen? I think it's it's getting destroyed by the shorts. But just based on this chart alone, what do you think it's will happen? Gonna, right uh, now, it looks like it's going to break down. down. So we have this wedge. We're about 80% through it. It's got to pick a direction. I, I, that I it's, think, it's not a bear. It's they need news. If they have news, it'll go up. If they don't have news, I mean, it'll continue to go down. So I have a level I mean, here that's, at that's $1. Cool $1. ninety. Days. It I could drop to buck ninety tomorrow, or it could go up to this two twenty nine and break over it and hold this floor, depending on what happens in the morning. Well, yeah, but it is really testing the, the. Wait, what did you say, Dragon? Yeah, what? I said it tested um, breaking the the triangle like twice. Yeah. So you never know. If... Exactly. You really never know. Because a lot of people, like myself, I often try to trade all angles, but I find my, I'm like, whatever, I'm trading the chart. I just, there's I stick with the confusing, chart. There's some confusing, contradicting stuff going on between S C E N N and M U L N. They're saying like the people that are invested in C E N N are also invested in M U L N and it's the same people, it's the same company. I don't know. It's a bunch of shit. That I can't figure out. <laughs> yeah, I'm invested in M U L N. Oh, and I, I, I have, I have Sundial. I forgot because weed. Oh, the weed stocks are down. Yep, they but never hold their gains. Look, they don't. Like no, you have to play them. the news. It's always sell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you always I'm... play the weed. Is one thing that I've noticed is that you got to play the news. I mean, you got to yeah. sell it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If, if Those are stocks that you don't really want to invest in until they get the FDA, whatever approvals, the Senate vote. It's, until they get the Senate vote, it's always going to be sell the news, buy the rumor. So it fell under this, it's fucking wedge, it's triangle here, but it's holding this level. So you have the price, the price pinched all day between. Is that a weekly chart? Daily. The price oh, okay. pinched all day between 6.5 and 6.4 right here. So, Sundial is another one that I make money on. That must be an hourly candle. No, it's a daily candle. Oh, yeah, but what's the time frame? Daily. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, like in my charts, I could put daily and then I could put one minute, ten minute, whatever. Oh, well, I can put the ten minute. Like, this is this is a day. This is the trading day. This is the after hours. So these yeah. are 10, 10 minute candles. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what, what I mean. Okay. What What do you guys think about uh say right now? S E Y or S A Y? S E I. S E I. Oh, I haven't heard of this one. What's up with this? Uh, I can't read that ten minute chart. Can't read the <laughs> can't read the thirty. Can't read the hour. So hour. they got a ten the OTC coming. Stock? I can hardly read the daily. Look at that. Oh no, that's the, okay. That's four hour. Oops. I can hardly read the daily. Still, look at that. Is this a is this a OTC? No, uh, it's fourteen. Oh no, it's C. So oh, it's C E I. -E -I. I was gonna say like this chart. Oh, <laughs> this chart, I can't even read. Fuck. But fucking C E I. Okay, 
That makes more sense. I get my S's too. and C's confused too. Don't worry. Okay. Um. Well, yeah. you guys, you guys know what my CER chart looks like on the on Trading View. It has them big boxes with each of these runs. This is the daily. Right here is my load zone below this blue line. Because I, I apparently I've been loading like on it. So um. Are you I feel down like or you have a good size? Like, what's up with your with your trade? So I I got like eight hundred shares. So that's nice. What's, not, your, what's your? I, I don't. That, my average is like eighty nine. Is anyone so else I mean, looking at just oil? Like the whole sector? I think it's all consolidating. I think it's just waiting for. I have this SDPI. Like this thing's a dollar three SDPI. It's been trading between this this dollar. Wait, I'm on the weekly. It's been trading between this this dollar, between a dollar fifteen, and about a dollar three, roughly. That's, so, that's yes, all the oils and energy stocks have been consolidating, and what's going to yeah. make them pop is the news. What was the news right. today? The news. Who can for, tell me what happened today on the news? I don't know. Uh, I watch, or, news did, are post. they trying to? Are we trying to get? like uh canadian oil now okay so the news today is that we the major news breaking news was that the u.s and the western countries are putting what on russia Locked. sanctions more um, sanctions. Um, more sanctions yes yeah. Woo-hoo! okay so we're putting more sanctions on russia which means what this consolidation that's going on what's going to happen it's gonna go up it's gonna pop. There you go. Yay. That's so why I'm okay. holding this fucker. That's why I keep saying SDPI dollar three okay, for the last so three weeks. We, I got it. What do we need for it to pop though? Okay, we know that this there's more sanctions on Russia. They're putting they're putting more sanctions and stuff, and Biden's gonna talk about it probably here in the next couple of days. Then what's gonna happen? Something's gonna have to happen for these stocks to move. And what is that? Oil's gonna go up. Yeah. Yes, but what's going to happen in the news? They're going to no. talk about it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. No. They're yeah. going to talk yeah. about it. I was like, we don't know, Cheryl. I wish I came from the future. I would tell you. Crude oil, <laughs> Brent oil, blah, blah, blah. Oil this, oil that. Uh, yeah. Energy, energy, just, EV, I'm... EV stocks, oh, the grid. I mean, they're going to start pumping that shit. And that's when you're going to see all of your stuff going through the roof. So if you have money sitting food on shortages. the shortages, Food shortages. Okay. Food, there we go. We're going to talk about food shortages. Okay. We're gonna, there, so it's going to be, it's a pattern. Just like stocks are a pattern, this news crap is a pattern. Have we heard about COVID lately? No. So that's why the bio no. sector is down. So, if you, so hey, I have a ticket for you guys to check. I got in YTEN. It's an agriculture stock. Because okay, I've let's... been seeing a lot of things about, like, Europe is saying there's food shortage. That was, like, yesterday. So... I got in YTE. Yeah, look at that. Just a few days ago, on the thirtieth, it was six thirteen. Right now, it's four eighty four. Yeah. Okay. I got, I'm this, a- okay. Put that in the room. Okay. So we got something that's probably a bottom right there on a food mm-hmm. shortage stock. YTEN. Yeah. What's mm-hmm. the daily average on that? It's right six. The daily average is two hundred and seventy eight thousand. Perfect. And what's the what's the volume on a green day? Um. The last three days, one point eight million. Uh, well, yeah, yep, yeah, one point seven six, one point seven okay. seven million. There you go. So that's something that I want to add. Okay, I will add a couple of hundred shares on that because why? Because well, it's a food shortage stock. It's an agricultural stock, and it's at the bottom red. And I know in a couple of days or so, they're going to start talking about it on the news. Mm-hmm. And regardless if it has volume or not, it's still going to go. CLXT. Okay? CLXT is another buy sell short food play that that he called. He called it up here around a dollar. He he wanted to add it under a dollar. Right now it is at eighty cents, and it is I'm a adding food that. play. Se- Seventeen million is the float. The average volume is two hundred and seventy six thousand on a green day. The volume is two point eight million, and that okay. was just a few days ago. So I have a whole bunch of that. Okay, so put those put those plays in the room. Put it in hot alerts. You know, you guys got to put some alerts up there for us so we can also play your plays. I you need know? confidence. So that's, that's what I need. It's, 
it's okay. I mean, it's our job to do our due diligence. So but see, I, like- I, 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 felt, I felt the same way, but you know what? I'm like, you know what? My calls have been good. Like I called BEM that went through the roof, $5, $6 spread. Yeah. I mean, I, with, I, with I my y, YVR up. call was fucking, it was just like, oh, well, this is a top loser. It was just red candles all day. And I'm like, this is obviously going to go up. But then when I, if I say to myself, would I give this to, you know, Shar, for example, then it's like, no, I don't know what it's going to do. But then, of course, the next day it went up, and I'm like, I knew exactly what the fuck it was gonna do. I just need the confidence. That's yeah, all. I, I put once again, what we put in time the room, goes down. <laughs> once again, whatever we put in the room, no one can blame us for it. Mm-hmm. If we're if we decide to invest in these stocks that you put in the room, because at the end of the day, it's our job to do our due diligence. You know, there's no any difference than me tweeting out something and someone getting in because they True. follow me blindly. It's the mm-hmm. same thing in, in any of these discords. You know. That's like when I'm in, when I when I post things in Money Empire, they they have the same fan bot. So I just like if I see a chart that I think I might like, or a chart that's knifing, or a chart that's up for the day, I'll just post it. I don't say like I think this is. I just post the chart, and if anybody sees it and likes what they see, they can play it how they want to play it. Exactly. So you know it's the same thing, but in our, you know here in RST, I would like to give a well thought out idea for a trade and not just add a chart to the huge mix of charts running through. Well, maybe chat, if one of us knows something you don't know, they can comment on it or something. You know, true. It's just a confidence yeah. thing, and you're, you guys are um, giving it back. To but me, so. sometimes it's hard to explain because you're momentum trading, and you don't have time to explain everything. You right. just, you know, like look at the chart. You know, That's you why it's very be- important if you see a chart, check when it was posted. You know what I mean? Don't don't use yes. that chart to trade. Check when it was posted and go look at the other you, charts. Go open up your own charting and look at it. And you'll be able to tell. You can look at the RSI to see if it's about to be running, the volume coming in, the support, the resistance. Oh, my God. That one stock yesterday. Oh, A-T-E-R. I rode that EMA. I saw your post, Alpha. That was awesome. Yeah, let me see if I still have it in my phone. Look at this. This was like the perfect freaking, here it is, right here. I just posted it in the chat. Should, look, should, at, look at that. Hopefully you sent it to Bentley. You'd, you'd like that one. Yeah, look, look. Uh, put it on the screen. Wait, which chat um, you posted in? Oh, you posted it in live music. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Hold on. There you go. Yeah, that's crazy. That blue line is my nine EMA, nine, yeah. and I yeah. and I knew the day, so I got in the stock at three dollars right when I heard about it running. So I got in at three dollars, and I heard Bentley was like, "Take profit here; it's breaking a resistance." I'm like, "No, I'm not taking anything. I'm gonna ride this because I don't see any red candle underneath the EMA." Which is it what he always broke. says. If it drops under the EMA, fucking take your profits. But he, yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, why am I, why am I taking? But he kept saying, like, I would scale some profit here. I would take this profit. I'm like, no, I'm not taking any profit. Scared money well, makes maybe, no money. And well, maybe, so he is just trying to help like, people. Uh, who he is. He don't, is. He's to, who, I mean, who really don't know when to take profit. You know what I mean? But you know, if you're a good chart reader and you're becoming a good chart reader, <laughs> you're not. You're just gonna do what you're, what you know what to do, right? So look at that. I, it never went below the nine EMA, and he kept yeah. saying, if, "If you because I think he, I think this is my one minute, so you can see the frequency is one minute on here. He was on the five minute, so I was on the one minute, and I was just like, no, it's, it hasn't broken it yet. And if you're a momentum day trader, you need to be on the nine EMA. It's the perfect, perfect, perfect one for tell you um, about your support." And so it never broke it. And I wrote it all the way up. And then as soon as you see that red candle that broke the 9 EMA and it went flat at the top, that's where, um, that's exactly where I sold. So I, I use Bentley's, uh, same indicators and that's what, how I called Ader, you know, just the MACD RSI and the volume was looking really nice. I Mm stole his settings from his live streams. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it does. Like the RSI when I called eight or today was like below twenty. <laughs> and this was literally like guys a ten minute trade. Yeah, it's awesome. It's almost. 
I had a yeah. thousand shares from from you could have traded this from the moment the market opened to just for one hour, and you would have gone from two forty five to three seventy. Mm-hmm. But like from three dollars to three seventy or whatever it was, it was it was not that long. I right, I posted yeah. three, it in the room. Three I was, said it. three. It was right here. So from when I from ten when I to ten fifteen. When I got it at three dollars, I posted it in the room A T E R, and then I came back in there and I was like sold. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, that's a quick 15%, 20%, you know, just yeah. like that. Yeah. Great job. Does anybody have any other charts? Um, at, After hours, I got in TH, what, what, let me see what it is. T-H-A. Um, yeah. PHCA, which I'm well up on that one. Kind of excited for tomorrow. And I also got in BBAI. These are both SPAC plays. Yes. They're low floats. <clears throat> Look at that. That's today go, after hours. That's the nice. 30, 30 minute candles. Yep. From nice. 10 to I was out and about and I just saw the notification for the BBAI and I bought it at like 1034. Next thing I know, it's in 11s, it's in the 12s, it's in the third. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then THC, whatever CA is just like riding up real nice. So I'm hoping tomorrow. I make a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, if you look, e even on the on the thirty minute chart for this THCA, it's uh -huh. riding the uh, nine. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it, we we always talk about the nine as the indicator for the day trade, but it's it's just a really strong EMA. If any of these time frames are bouncing off the nine, it's bullish. If the nine is up, you know what I'm saying? The okay. daily RSI though, like ninety. What's the RSI? Run oh, hot. Shit. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah, see? And so if you're somebody who doesn't use RSI, you might look at this stock and say, oh, man, so this is this could just keep going and not see anything there that, that says it might slow down besides the fact that it keeps going up. But if you're somebody who tends to use the RSI as an indicator, then you see clearly you're like, oh, man, that's uh, that's crazy, especially if you're swinging it. You're yeah. Like, okay, well, I might, you know, maybe I should have got out right, right here or whatever. <clears throat> That's Definitely big scale big. profits, Miss Jen, because it's yeah, a low float it. and you don't know what the hell is gonna happen. It's only yeah. nine 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 million float, average volume twenty two two hundred and thirty three K and the volume today was almost four million. Uh-huh. So yep. you could have a lot of people who you know the way I always look at stocks like this, if I have a stock and it goes up all day and I don't sell it or whatever, I stop and think about the people tomorrow. Because not everybody who has this stock was staring at it all day. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe he's at work. Maybe he comes home and he's off work tomorrow. And when he turns his 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 broker on, he says, "Oh shit, I'm selling." And maybe there's a whole bunch of that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you really never know who is gonna sell when. You gotta uh -huh. think about all the all all the different angles. Okay. When the stock market, we have to worry about everyone else and our investment. Uh -huh. That's that's the thing, right? So we we're greedy when. Others are what fearful, and we're fearful when others are greedy. Uh -huh. So if you stick to that mentality, you'll always win. Yep. So definitely scale some profits. I mean, uh -huh. I I really think that T T H A T A whatever that one is, I think that's gonna go to like twenty bucks. To be honest with you, but <laughs> just to be safe, you know, scale profits. Yes. Something I like to do. My son's like, ah, oh, we could have made this. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but we always scale. I always take half of profits on the way up. Are you the listening, Ryan? I, I, I always he... do that. He's listening. He's right next to me, listening and laughing. Uh, last time <laughs> I said, oh, man. Early. Oh, man, I could have made this. I could have made this. It, it, it prompted me to hold the next time I had a trade like that, and I lost a couple hundred dollars. And then I was like, never, never doing that I... again. 
Mm-hmm. Never regret taking a gain. Move on to the next play. If you as buy something you for, for a dollar and you sell it for two dollars and it goes to five dollars, you made a dollar per share. Congratulations. Exactly. I don't even care. If it's, I don't even care if it's up two pennies. If that thing is taking forever to get to the third penny, I'm out. Like Same. I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> because I got, got in car. <laughs> I have Inbar calling out all kinds of plays all ever, you know, all like, oh my God, he's been calling out so many plays one after the other. I, I don't want to be stuck in something waiting for it to go up like two pennies. Like I'm out. Like if I'm, if I'm already green on that, you know, I don't want that trade to go red. Cause I'm sitting there waiting because people are penny chasing. I'm done. I'm like, goodbye. I'll, I'll catch you guys on the dip, you know, and I'm on to my next play. Like if the tape's not moving like crazy, then yeah, I just move on to the next. Yeah, day. this is how this is this is what differentiates you from a trader yeah. to um a, like you know someone that doesn't know what you're doing because you got you got to be quick with it. You got to be like yeah. Speedy Gonzalez or like a Sonic the Hedgehog. The one stock, the one stock just the other day that I didn't take profits was CYRN. I want I to know. scream. We're I all the same boat. My biggest loss. I mean, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I did sell in the fourth, 419, I think was my sale. But um, honestly, probably one of my biggest losses. It's okay. <laughs> I was, I was, we I pay market it. tuition. That's okay. a prime yeah. example of a stock that. Yep. All of all of you guys were all in that stock, and I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And when okay. this happened, I looked at it and thought, "Oh no!" Like RST's wallet, and I went and looked at the at the fucking <laughs> feed, and you guys are all like fucking down thousands. And when it <laughs> when it hit the bottom here, I you know I thought to myself, "This could run have- the next day. I should definitely buy this in the morning and sell it immediately." And I was right. This is the trade that I was looking for from three to three fifty, and I was right, and I didn't buy it, but I was right. Uh- you know, but uh, you know what? That's look at the those thing top is, users. I I invest now. I have what thirteen thousand dollars invested in this stupid company, and I swear to God, like if the you know if it, I told Ms. Jen this, I said if it goes under two dollars, if it goes under three dollars, I'm out. So today I called her and I said I'm about to sell CYRN. But as soon as I called her and hung up with her, the thing went right back to 310. And I'm like, really playing games with me because mm-hmm. I was going to dump it. I was going to dump 3,000 shares at uh, 296 or whatever it went down to. But then when I called Ms. Jenna, I was like, Ms. Jenna, I'm about, to, I'm about to dump the stock. It went right back to 310. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I am like, all right, you know, because you got to know your risk management. I'm okay with taking a $3,000 loss on this. Or yeah. whatever. Like actually it's gonna be more than that. It's gonna be like almost four grand because I have it at four twenty five. Um my average what is four twenty five. But hold on. Now you you do you here's my my question, and obviously I'm not trying to influence what you do, I'm just trying to learn really. Would do you and obviously I think I know the answer, you have enough money in your life to to hold that that stock until it goes back up you don't want to hold it if it takes a year two fucking years you don't want to hold that shit i get it but yeah what do you you know do you really think we're 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 and that's exactly what i this crazy russia bullshit like this stock isn't staying down here even if it's just a meme on twitter for a day it's gonna go back up Miss Jen, do you want to tell him what I told you? What you okay? Miss Jen called me back right before this training, and this is exactly <laughs> what we talked about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, Russia is doomed to hit us. Right. I mean, unfortunately, it, it's going to happen. Maybe not right this second, but I'm sure they their payback will come. And that's everybody goes to CYRN when it's cybersecurity on the news or cyber attack. That stock is going to go. So, yeah. and I, I'm sure it's going to go if it's in the free area. It's this, going this up line, for five dollars. This line right here, two two dollars, is its 52 week low. If you see this stock drop, any if I see this stock drop anymore, I'm going to buy it. And I don't have a whole lot of money. I'm going to buy this fucking stock. Mm-hmm. Like, so that's what it. happened. So I saw my go- my my I'm rule is. My rule is if it fell under three dollars, I'm out. And it did. It fell under three dollars and I panic called Jen today. And next thing you know, right when I was on the phone with her, it went right back up to three ten. I'm like, because it's a low float. I'm like, okay, whatever. And so I'm still holding it. I'll give it till Friday. I don't need the money. I could let it sit there and be a bag and you know, whatever, but I'm definitely watching it. I feel like it's at the bottom. I feel like that is its new bottom right there. 
I feel yeah. like that's that's what this this market felt like all day today. It was like it's just at the yeah. bottom. It's just sleeping, and everything was just flopping on the ground. It's just how it felt. Right. Like. And then I and then I was watching the news, and Jenna, what's that lady's name? Yellen, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. Yellen. The Fed. Yeah, the federal lady, Secretary yeah, Yellen. Yellen. She warns Russian criminals: you do, you cannot hide in Russia or anywhere in the world. And they're like cracking down on cyber, uh, cryptocurrency, cyber attacks, all kinds of crap. So I'm like, oh, it's starting to get bullish again. So we'll see what happens. But they did have PR today, and nothing happened to the stupid stock. Because everybody's running from it. It reminds me of genius. Remember, genius got me. Oh, God. <laughs> reminds yeah. me of that. It's like, but I honestly, once it's on the news all day, like it's it's bound to happen. And when it's on the news nonstop and the stock's going. Whoever I mean, is I, in their marketing department of this stupid company, they suck and they all need to be fired because what uh -huh. they should have done was they should have ran some PRs because of the Ukraine cyber or whatever. They should have, instead of just doing some stupid tweets, they should have ran some really nice PRs, spent some marketing money on it, and the stock would have went to $15, and then they could have diluted whatever they needed to dilute, and no one would have cared. Uh -huh. Or they wouldn't That's even notice. That's how you run <laughs> Wall Street. Oh, my God. Yep. Sometimes I wish I had a public company. <laughs> <laughs> now, because it would look be all at about it, my investors. Look at it from the daily, and this is important too because that 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 low that I said of of two dollars the the day that it hit it was it was just a shit day for everything. I mean, look at it. It's this is the bottom three according I mean, to the guys, chart. They could have created a beautiful story. Like literally, they knew that the stock was hot. It's been hot all this freaking month of. March, right? We've been in CYRN every other day making money on the stock. They could have, if they really cared about their uh, shareholders and stuff, they could have made a really nice video, made some, like they could have hired a nice PR firm to do their video about cyber attacks, this and that. They could have did a PR news release with the video. They could have blasted it. That's how you market. Like these, these Wall Street companies, some of them really lack marketing skills. And when you put that type of money into it, that stock would be sitting at twenty, thirty dollars right now because it's a low float. And then they could have diluted whatever they needed to dilute, and no one would have gave a shit. Look, this is my point. You don't point. dilute it on a Friday uh, when the thing is at five dollars. When your stock's highest day this month, that that same month was nineteen. Yeah, let it bucks. exist. Ugh. Oh my God! Look, this is in two thousand two. It dropped to three sixty, and then yeah. right, right, right here in two thousand eight, it dropped to four ten, and then right here in twenty nineteen, on January thirty first, it dropped to two sixty five and picked right all the way back up to its level that day of fifty three dollars. My my point is this two dollar low that it had in in you know last month was all time absolute low that it's never reached, and it picked right back up and. That, that dump yesterday brought it to $3, which is lower than any previous low, except for the one a few days ago. This really feels like bottom to me. but It, it is. It, it is bottom. I mean, I know it is. But let's see what happens. I'm just a little teed off with the stupid company because they could have they could have did it better. They're just idiots. And um, like most of these stupid Wall Street, this is why I don't invest in these penny bullshit small cap stocks because I'm done. I'm just going to trade them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Exactly how I feel. This is the one that held LLAPs <laughs> on my uh, crap list too. Yeah, they're on my crap list. I I literally took a two dollar profit on that. I was so pissed. Two dollar yeah. profit, guys. I'm like, what the hell is this shit? It's about to drop again. I'm out because it just it just looked bearish. And then I, you know, being on Twitter with 40 some thousand followers they put all kinds of shit under your post and i just saw this one bear who's like oh it's gonna go to five dollars and i'm like okay mr bear thank you <laughs> and he was right of course he was right so whatever you know just if just take your profits if it's a green trade take it because yeah. it's going to dip and that's the mentality that i had to put myself in and I feel so great about it. I don't even regret taking a gain. Never yeah, even like I have done that with HYMZ because I I lost pretty much all my profits with HYMZ. Uh, I made like profits. 
Yeah, I I made like four dollars, and I could have made like two hundred, three hundred dollars. I got greedy. What'd you learn? Take profits. <laughs> what did you yeah. learn about your personal strategies? Did you figure out at which point you truly made your mistake? Because that's that's what matters. If you did, then you won. So you won't do it again. I. I believe that uh, I just got caught up in the hype and I thought I was going to do a lot more. There you go. So, you know, that fear of missing out and, and, FOMO. and I, I feel like it's always going to be something that is going to get just any trader. Cause unless you have like a very strict um, discipline and, strategy well you will that's that's what that's how you can tell the seasoned traders apart from us noobs is that when we're like oh have you heard about it it's going here they look at us and smirk yeah fucking right it's not yeah right yeah and we're like okay sure whatever mr big wall street and then we lose all our money and they laugh yep yeah. always always that's, that's why always 50 50 percent profit on the way up in bar, he takes his profits, guys. He takes his profits. Like even today, when he called that shit at four, he didn't know that shit was gonna go to six dollars and eighty cents. He took profit when it got to like you know four four ninety or whatever Look, the hell. You know he, the first break, he wrote it and he took profit. And then he doesn't get mad at the people that were holding. And he was like, "Congratulations, I should have held longer, but it's okay. I made money." He's positive. It's, yes, and he's yeah. like happy about it. You know, and that's, and that's that's the most important thing that, that he says. Out. Sell when happy. Sell when happy. Yeah. Not sell when green. Sell when up. Sell when you're at fifty percent. Sell when you're at five. Sell when you're happy. If you look at a stock and you go, "Oh my god, I'm this, I'm up." Fucking sell it. Sell when yeah, you're happy. That's what they say. When you, if you're gonna take a snapshot of uh, your earn winnings, that's yeah. when you should have taken your profits. Exactly. <laughs> sell, sell when you're happy. And he and he says that every day in all caps, and not because it's his catchphrase, but because if you really think about it, and take that advice literally. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll, you, you won't ever lose your fucking gains because you'll be like, oh my God, I'm so happy. And you'll go to immediately to sell it and you'll see it run two more bucks and you won't care. You'll be like, congratulations, everybody. And that's how you get rich. Yeah. It's amazing. We really need and to it's... get Inbar here because, I mean, I, he's, he's great. I mean, he, yes. he calls, yep. he calls some plays that I'm like, Dude, that guy's been asleep for hours. <laughs> I'm, look, great. I'm more than willing to, uh, you know, and bar, fucking well, host a right. host a and show at on a on a on a Saturday at four in the morning. I don't give a shit. Well, here's the deal. I send, Me too. I, send, I will wake I up. Bar, you guys don't know this, but I send in bar our training videos every week, and I tell him that we talk about him every week, so he listens to them. He said he'll never come because he's not comfortable with the voice <laughs> and, uh, his, and his accent. So, so who cares? That's all what right. What about Brantley? Have you tried to get Brantley on? Bentley, I am working on it. He's been going through some personal issues, um, yeah. you know. So I'm letting him breathe a little bit. Okay. So, um, but yes, we will have Bentley, and I'm I'm gonna do a schedule. I know I've been slacking. Sorry, guys, I've been super busy with everything in my life that's going on. With you know, I have to make some decisions. Uh, you know, I just want to see where I want to move to, or if I want to. You know, there's a lot of things happening in my life. Um, as far as uh, good things, good positive things, and you know things are happening, I stuff happening. So we'll see what happens. And um, but yeah, I do want. And if you guys, if you guys network and you find people in Wall Street that you want to bring into RST that you know you feel like will be a good fit, or maybe they're part of like you know some kind of uh you know they're brokers or whatever we have a lot of people in RSC that don't talk all day because they're busy doing wall street stuff you know um i, I do want to bring charles Payne on and see if he'll give us some time um yeah. some of his free time in our training it's just you know a couple of us but I, i'm sure he will um you know and bring where's he like get his suits from <laughs> he gets them tailored <laughs> yeah if I yeah it's gonna be tailored gets a yeah, no. so we can bring all these people on, and I'll work on a schedule and get them scheduled and stuff. It's just a lot of work, <laughs> but we'll get it done. And um, but if you guys have ideas for our training, that's what this is about. You know, it's just it's not just me and stocks only. We want everyone involved. And um, maybe you have a video that you want to share. I like to share things that are trending, 
and that's current events that we can relate to. So I felt like we needed to hear more about Elon Musk. So that's why I picked him. And watched it yet but i told you to put it in the room and then we also have a training channel so if you want to talk about something that you don't understand or maybe there's an indicator that you want to learn put it in there because we want to learn it too and we'll we'll research it and we'll find it because we're all self-taught we didn't go to school for this stuff you know we're all self-taught um stock traders so we're still learning um we're still learning something new every single day so um yeah. it's uh I wanted to say, uh, I feel like we should have a, a like a section just in regards to strategy, because I feel like if we share our strategies, we could probably relate to some of the other person's strategy or probably imp implement some of those strategies that we see from another person in our own strategy. I've been thinking and, about that, that, that idea. So why don't you that, put that it in the thing. best? the best practice training slash strategy category under school. Well, because like, because what, what you're talking about is like laser focus, a section about our specific strategy. And that's something that could be the entire training. Then I really want to do it like a second one sometime and not, maybe not everybody can make it, but if you're somebody who really wants to get in and have like a conversation about your strategy, like you are dragon, I'm more than willing to be like, yo, on Sundays or fucking Fridays or whatever. Sundays would probably be best for me, but you know, to have something where we can go in and be like, all right, these are my trades for the week. This is where I fucked up. This is what I'm doing. What do you think I should do? Let me, you know, let me hear your point of view. I'm, I'm down to do versa. that and uh, scan. Yeah, I'm, I'm down, down for do that, that too, guys. Like, right. I do nothing but stock stuff on Sundays anyway. I'm, I am Googling, I'm training, I'm, I'm spending four hours on Sundays after church, after I watch my Sunday service. And I'm doing stock stuff. So I, you know, I don't mind doing that. I think that's great. The only thing I do on Sunday is stream. And that's two to three hours maximum of my day. So I have time whenever to, you know, to fucking. And we train. could do it right in the evening, like around maybe early, you know, right. like six, seven or whatever after dinner. And we could do that. And we can. And then that way we can have a fresh mind for Monday going into Monday. So, yeah, if you guys are interested in something like that. Go ahead and set it up. Like, you know, that's that, fine. That's uh, on Sundays at the very end of the night, Lori and I go in and make a watch list just right then and there without looking at anything or without looking at any trends. We use only like, you know, screeners and whatnot to try to make a watch list. And that gets me out of weekend mode and into stock mode right before I go to bed. And when I wake up, that's I'm like, cool. I got to look at my watch list. I got to see what's going on. So I really feel like doing stock shit on Sunday is extremely helpful. It's been helpful for me. I've been doing it for the last two years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, honestly, that 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 will be uh, something that I do want to implement. Um. So well, every said, Sunday, I, I also have a yeah. lot of like uh, a lot of training videos on swing trading strategy, day trading strategy, things on like like uh, fib uh retracements and shit. I have all these videos that are like eight to ten minutes each, and on those days we could pick a specific kind you know like a oh, i love that talk about yeah. our, our 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 strategy and then say all right let's pick one video well, and why don't talk we about do that, that why is. don't we do it let's start it on sunday okay and let's do this training strategies and we can go through the video series so like the first video second video like we'll do one every week and then we'll do that for the month of april yeah, yeah okay I'm down. I'm, I'm down okay okay Perfect. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's do that. So we'll do a video series of stocks only, all his video series of the little 10 minute videos, and that'll be great. So we can start it on Sundays, and that'll be our strategy training. Uh, RST strategy training. Yep. Perfect. This is, this Yay. Is, this love is, it. This is my love st it. strategy on this, Sunday. I mean, so I'm getting really serious more more about like my the gym and i'm trying to get even more serious about stocks because i know that we can definitely succeed Going to uh, gym, the... huh? GG, bro. so um that that is something that i was looking to speak with you about um because i wanted to to do the strategy thing so i'm excited about sunday now
Okay, yeah, cool. I've been thinking about it for like uh, for a few weeks now. Well, I do it on my own anyway, but uh, I watch Bentley's videos, BSS videos. I, I you know, I, I spend four hours because, you know, when Tim Sykes is like, did you guys study this weekend? I'm always under his post like, yes, I put four hours. <laughs> so, you know, so just this will be great for us. I think that will help us to get refreshed for the week and start our Monday off right because Mondays are usually bullish. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll put a reminder out on Friday and Saturday. And of course on Sunday it'll be, you know, hey. Wow, it's ten twenty five already. All right. Yeah, so we're let's like, uh, <laughs> let's wrap this up. I love you guys. If you guys have any other questions or comments or anything, just put it in the chat. Um it's, we'll, it's worth we'll noting. Play last- we huh? get later this gets later every week. We go over time every week even it does, longer. You know and that's what? that's that's what Pablo said is because we have real shit to talk about. We just get into but, it and we're like, oh, but we're late. You know what? We love talking. And then here's another thing. When I did my Twitter lives, our shows would be like two, three hours because people would just have so many questions and stuff. You know? I was there. Yep. All yeah, right. Exactly. I love you guys. Let's watch this last video. It's Elon Musk closing us out about uh, what's the video called? Against all odds. Against all odds. Even though, guys, there might be all kinds of shit thrown at you. Don't give up. Do not give up. Keep working hard. You'll get there. We'll all get there together. I love you guys. Have a good night. Love you, Char. Let me, you guys, let me know if you can't hear it. Press and play. Okay, press play. I can hear it. Thank you. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Uh, Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. One of the most difficult choices I've ever faced uh, in life was, was in 2008. Um, and um, I think I had uh, like a, maybe $30 million left, or $30 or $40 million left in 2008. And I had two choices. I could put it all into one company and then the other company would definitely die um, or split it between the two companies. And, but if I split it between the two companies, then both might die. Um, and you know, when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something or building something, it's like a child. And so it's like, which one am I going to let one starve to death? I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I, put, I, I split the money between the two. Fortunately, thank goodness, uh, they both came through. What was your biggest failure, and how did it change you? Well, there's a ton of failures along the way, that's for sure. Like, so for, as, I, as I said, for, for SpaceX, the first three launches failed. And uh, we, we, we actually were just barely able to scrape together enough parts and, and money to do the, the fourth launch. If that fourth launch had failed, we would have been dead. So, multiple failures along the way. Um, I tried very hard to, to get the right expertise in for, for SpaceX. I tried hard to, to find a great uh, chief engineer for the rocket, but it, not, the good chief engineers wouldn't join, and the bad ones, well, there was no, no point in hiring them. So I ended up being chief engineer of the rocket. Um, so if I could have found somebody better, then we would have maybe had less than three failures. That third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. So many people tried to talk me out of starting a ride company. It was, it was crazy. One good friend of mine collected a whole series of videos of rockets blowing up and made me watch those. He just didn't want me to lose all my money. 
we're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed. And we've been fortunate, and at least thus far, they have succeeded. Now is the time to take risk. You don't have kids. As you get older, your obligations increase. And once you have a family, you start taking risk not just for yourself, but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time to do that. Uh, before you, before you have those obligations. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. How did you figure you were going to start a car company and be successful at it? Well, I, I didn't really think Tesla would be successful. I thought we would most likely fail. But I thought that we at least uh, could address the false perception that people had that an electric car had to be ugly and slow and and boring like a golf cart. But you say you didn't expect the company to be successful, then why try? If something's important enough, you should try, even if you, the probable outcome is failure. Or how do you think about making a decision when everyone tells you this is a crazy idea? Or where do you get the internal strength to do that? Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of fear. I, I think about what, what technology solution is necessary in order to achieve the particular goal, and then try to make as much progress in that direction as possible. I think the, being a multi-planet species, being out there among the stars, is important for uh, the long-term survival of humanity. And uh, that's one reason. Um, but then the part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure and it makes people excited about the future. Um, you know, if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living. When my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, sm a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hot up, we had one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day, uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period. And in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So uh, work hard, like, it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. Whatever area that you get into, um, given that you know, even if you're if you're the best, the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Um, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. If you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, you're, it'll just it, it's it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and and if you don't like it, you, you just really can't make it work. I think. Thank you guys for coming. I love you guys. All rights reserved. So previously when we were using we spreadsheets. Because we're fucking stupid. I don't know what we're talking about. Oh, have a good night, everybody. Good night, my friend. I'll talk to you guys some more in the chat. Good night. Good night, RC. <clears throat>